In this clip we're going to look at cell division. In particular we're going to look at two situations when cells divide. Firstly when new cells are needed for repair or growth and secondly when gametes or sex cells are needed for sexual reproduction, sperm and eggs in animals or pollen and ova in plants. In both cases before cells can divide every chromosome must make an exact copy of itself. Put another way, every DNA molecule must be replicated. So there's enough DNA to give the cells the right numbers of chromosomes. The first type of cell division we're going to look at is mitosis. This is the process that produces new cells for growth because remember we all started as one single cell and we're now made of billions of cells and for repairing damaged tissue or the routine replacement of cells in our body. So for growth, we all started out as one tiny little single cell and through the process of mitosis those cells dividing and dividing and dividing after nine months we were a little person. When we cut ourselves, we need to repair that break in our skin by growing new cells to cover the gap. And in areas like our skin, cells are constantly rubbed off and lost, and new cells are produced by cells underneath the skin layer dividing to produce those new cells. So the cell kind of has a cycle. It's either making its DNA, having a little rest, the gap part of the cycle, or dividing that DNA up by mitosis and the cell then dividing in two. Having a little rest, copying its DNA, and doing the dividing process again. So here's mitosis. We've got a cell here that has two pairs of chromosomes, the two long ones and the two short ones. Each chromosome made an exact copy of itself before mitosis happened and then once mitosis is underway the nucleus breaks down those chromosomes can then line up down the center of the cell. Spindle fibers can then attach to the centromere and physically pull those two copies apart. We've now got two copies of the big chromosome, two copies of the little chromosome at each end of the cell. A nucleus will then form around them and that cell will then pinch in the middle and divide to produce two cells identical to the original cell that began the process. So to sum up cell division by mitosis, there was just the one division Two new cells are produced, both those new cells were diploid, they have two sets of chromosomes, 46 in humans, and all the cells were genetically identical. They need to be genetically identical because you're wanting to replace new old cells or grow new cells and you don't want the cells therefore to be different all the time, you want your body to grow in the same way. The second sort of cell division process that we're looking at is meiosis. This is the process that happens in the ovaries of the testes to make eggs and sperm, gametes used in sexual reproduction, or in the plant, in the anthers and the ovary and ovules to produce pollen and ova. Here it is again we're starting with our same four chromosomes, two pairs. Before meiosis starts, each chromosome will replicate, copy its DNA and make an exact copy of itself. This time, the two homologous pairs find each other and lie close together and swap little bits of DNA from one chromatid to the other. You can see that here where that inner chromatid now has a bit of the green chromosome and the pink chromatid now has... A, the green chromosome has a bit of the pink. Then we have the first division of meiosis where the homologous chromosomes separate. 
then the second division of meiosis where each chromatid is pulled apart to give four new cells each with only one copy of each chromosome so they have half the chromosome number of the original parent cell and because of that recombination and because of something called independent assortment that we'll look at later each one of those gametes is different. So to sum up meiosis there are two divisions firstly when the homologous pairs separated and again when the chromatids of each chromosome were pulled apart. There were four new cells. They are hap haploid. They only have one set of chromosomes, one copy of each chromosome, so 23 in humans, and all the cells were genetically different from each other. So have a look at this diagram and see those differences in mitosis and meiosis. In both cases, we're starting with two pairs of chromosomes that have copied each other, copied themselves. In mitosis, they just line up one by one and are simply pulled apart to give two cells that are identical to the original cell before it replicated. In meiosis, we have the homologous chromosomes this time lining up together swapping bits of DNA and then the first division where the homologous chromosomes are separated. Then we have a second division where the actual chromatids of each one of those copied chromosomes are ripped apart to give four cells all genetically different with only half the chromosome number of the original parent cell before it replicated its DNA. So sexually reproducing populations are genetically varied because the gametes are also different. And the combinations that they make when they fertilize the egg and the sperm, when the egg and sperm fertilize each other, bring a whole range of combinations of alleles together. And this genetic variation in the offspring is a huge advantage to the survival of the species. But how does sexual reproduction produce genetic variation? That's going to be the subject of the next clip. And while you're looking at all those puppies, the mother, if she is under there, I think she is, that's a world record sized litter. She had 20 puppies.